What's up everybody, Cupins here and we are back with some more MMA fight picks. We are taking another look at UFC Fight Night, Whitaker vs. Till, which is taking place on UFC Fight Island. Here we have a light heavyweight bout between Paul Craig and Gazmarad and Tigalov, which is going to be on the main card. I really like this matchup because both guys are excellent grapplers. They have a ton of submissions on their record and tons of finishes overall. These guys are both about the same age. Paul Craig is 32 and Tigalov is 33. The real difference comes in the height and reach. Paul Craig is four inches taller with a five and a half inch reach advantage. He does have a bit more UFC experience. This will be his 10th fight in the UFC and this will be in Tigalov's fifth fight in the UFC. But in Tigalov does have a more extensive professional record. Let's take a look at Paul Craig. He is 12-4-1, and, and he is 4-4-1 four, four, and one in the UFC. He has four finishes, four losses by finish, and one draw in the UFC. Not a super impressive record, but he has been facing some high-level competition. He has like a 92% submission rate. He has one fight he ended by strikes. And if you look at all four of his amateur fights, he won all those by submission. If you include his amateur fights, he has 21 fights total. And only one of those fights went to a decision. And it ended up being a draw against Shogun Hua. And the rest of his record, if we look at it here, a lot of his fights end in the first round. He was finished three times in the first round to punches and elbows. Once by Alonzo, once by Khalil, once by Tyson Pedro here. And then he has one submission loss, which happened in the third round. Only one of his UFC fights, only one of his fights ever has gone to decision. And he didn't win nor lose. It ended up being a draw. So you have to wonder if that's weighing on his mind here to not leave it up to the judges again. It's no secret that Paul Craig is going to be looking for a submission here. He might have to set up the opportunity with strikes on the feet. It's very possible he could drop Antigolov and jump on something. It's possible for both guys here to get a knockdown and jump on a submission. We've seen that on both their records in the past. Paul Craig doesn't have the best striking arsenal, but he is improving. In his last several UFC fights, you can see each time he's made improvements in striking, adding new things to his game, trying new things out, and looking better with the strikes he already throws. He's good in the clinch. He's got some pretty good dirty boxing. So if Antigolov isn't able to get the takedown and they're stuck on the cage, expect Paul Craig to land some decent short elbows, short punches, and a lot of those short shots from the clinch. I hope we see more striking improvements here from Craig, but I sincerely hope he retired his spin kick. He has great grappling, but he doesn't have the best takedowns. He's not an amazing offensive wrestler, but he is able to secure the takedown. And I believe he's going to have a cardio advantage over Antigolov here, and that's going to help him get the takedowns later into the fight. Now let's take a look at Antigolov here, who is 20 and 6 in his pro career. All six of his losses he got finished, and he's only heard the judges scorecard one time, but he won that decision. Antigolov is a great wrestler here, and he has a lot of fights that end in the first round, whether he won or lost. A lot of first round finishes. I mean, his last two fights, he got finished in the first round. His first two UFC fights, he got first round finishes. And if we go down his record before that, you're going to see a lot of round ones here. It's very possible he could win in the first round. And if we look at his six losses, they were all finishes in the first or second round. And four of them are by strikes, two of them are by submissions. So he has shown he can get finished in multiple ways. Now, I will say, I think Antikolov is the better wrestler here. He does have a better takedown ability. However, he has a very bad gas tank. It's very possible that he only has one round of fighting in him. And if he doesn't win in the first round, he's going to get finished. I think that's very possible. I've seen it in some of his other fights. If he makes it even towards the end of the round, he has almost no energy left. So it's very possible that we could see Paul Craig finish him in the second round after he ran out of gas. If we don't see a finish in the first round. And Tigalov does have a lot of first round finishes. I've seen him many times rock dudes with the right hand and then jump right on a submission. It's very possible. It could happen to Craig here. Craig doesn't have the best striking or striking defense, so he is susceptible to that right hand. I think most likely this fight doesn't make it out of the first round, but it's possible. And Paul Craig has a lot of late finishes. He has some in the second and third round. So I think he's going to have that finishing potential all the way through the fight, where I think Antigolov only has the finishing potential in the first round. And if he doesn't do it there, I don't think Antigolov can finish the fight. I mean, if you look, both guys have over 40 fights combined, and each guy has only ever heard the judges' scores once. 
So on a lot of UFC cards, I look for the fight that's almost a guaranteed no decision where you're positive some guy's gonna get the finish even though you don't know who. Uh, I think the odds for these guys are pretty even. I think Paul Craig might be a slight favorite, but it's a near pick em fight. I think the best bet here and the one that I'm playing is no decision. I think I got the no decision odds around the minus 315, minus 375. I have a couple bets on this. It opened at minus 265, which I wish I saw that price. I would have jumped on it early. But out of all 15 fights on the card, I think this one has the highest finishing potential. I am looking at a few others. I might parlay some. I am looking at the under one and a half here. I think there's a very high chance this fight ends in the first round. But I'm playing it safe on the no decision bets. I usually like the safer no decision bets, even if I'm getting worse odds. But the under one and a half odds are really good on here. So I might look to add that in a parlay or something. I do have a max bet on this fight, and I haven't missed one of my max bets in the last couple months since I started betting again. So we're hoping for another hit. Anyway, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more content. I put links to all my socials in the description below, even a link to where I track my picks on betmma.tips. And also check out my live streams at twitch.tv slash coupons. I do a fight companion during the UFC events, and then I also give out my live bets during the events. And we've been winning on those too. So be sure to check out the Twitch as well. Thank you guys for watching.